All right, so hi everybody and welcome back to Cybersecurity Elevated with C1 Risk and I'm delighted to be joined today by Ryan Hannon with Dinsmore and Scholl. Ryan's been working with us for a few years now. It seems like many, many years, Ryan, because you're so good, but uh, uh, but I guess it's only been just a few. But um, why don't you start by um, introducing yourself? I'll let you have that honor and uh, tell us a little bit about your background and, and what you're doing with Dinsmore. My name is Ryan Hannon. I'm a GRC analyst at Dinsmore and Shoal. I started here in April of 2021. Um, you know, I got into this space of GRC security and privacy because I guess I would just say accidentally. Um, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. <laughs> so, so yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's not something you really think you want to pursue as a career path until you end up there. But, um, you know, I was just looking for jobs that had research skills and regulatory knowledge um, and you know fresh out of school I just came across a role in anti-money laundering and bank secrecy act mm -hmm. compliance and from there just became interested in more generally executing compliance controls broader risk management um, working more closely with regulatory compliance but security and privacy were always alluring to me because the principles within those fields just felt more natural and I just felt I had more to offer um, in helping an organization achieve the strategic goals in those spaces um, so then I ended up in my current role here. My primary duties thus far have been um, really architecting and operating our vendor risk management program, managing compliance with client security and privacy requirements, and then maintaining our risk register and our ISO 27001 framework. Yeah, great. So we're, we're going to focus mostly on risk, but I know you did do a little bit of the ISO 27001 compliance when you first joined. So how, could you maybe just talk a little bit about how you've seen that progress um, since you've come on board and since you've started using C1 risk? Yeah. So when I joined the firm, um, we were using CyberOne in some capacity, but not at the level we are now. Um, you know, before I joined, they had been doing the classic on a spreadsheet um, with lists of controls with corresponding evidences, evidence items and owners, um, you know, and they were using CyberOne to collect documents. But since I've joined, we've matured more into using it to actually track controls, correspond to the evidence and the owners to those controls, rather than just collecting the documentation we need for the evidence, really making sure that we're addressing the risks that those controls are meant to address. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think, uh, you know, where we've seen you come is you're getting into the platform and just making sure that you have like a full audit trail that you're tracking everything uh, and keeping all those documents. Uh, you know, there can be like, you know, sometimes it's hard to keep track of all those documents when you're working on controls in a spreadsheet, right? And then you've got documents in all these different folders, you've got to find them every year for the audit. So hopefully we've been uh, able to help you kind of centralize some of that and, and, and expedite some of that process in the platform. So. Oh, absolutely, especially with ISO, because there are so many different evidence items that you can provide that might hit a couple of different controls and having to mm -hmm. store that and acknowledge that in multiple places in multiple ways is just not efficient and difficult to manage um, and navigate. So being able to have the control with the, you know, the, or the evidence item, I guess, with those multiple controls that yeah. it's associated to in one place is really, really um, an improvement. Exactly. Now all we've got to do is get your evidence owners to deliver your evidence in timely fashion. <laughs> right, right. Which, I mean, having the, the platform in place helps with that too, because there is accountability in it. You can, you know, That's not right, only yeah. set timelines on it, but you can make sure without a doubt of who is the evidence owner. You're not jogging around the office anymore, tapping people on their shoulder, right? <laughs> <laughs> Less than before, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great. So, so now, I, yeah, and yeah. So, we don't want to focus too much on compliance because I know really now your your um, main responsibilities lie in vendor management and um, and and risk management as well. So, could you just talk a little bit about what you've been doing um, with with that program and how you've been building it in in C one risk? Yeah, um, really taking that holistic strategic approach. Um, starting off you know and i found the way we look at our risk register as a whole you have the risks and you have the controls you associated to and the assets you associated to that's that can be a challenge of knowing where to start because it is such mm -hmm. a broad building process for me i found um doing it almost backwards of listing out our findings in the platform and then tracing it backwards to what are the risks of having these findings and what controls need to be strengthened to correct this and what assets are these risks either presented by or presented to? Um, doing it that way helped us really make more sense of it. Um, 
And then from mm -hmm. there, our risk register and what risks we see in our environment came kind of naturally. And since we were already following the ISO framework, knowing what controls we needed to have in place yeah. Yeah. was a, a little bit easier just because we already had that framework in place. So we were able to build off of that a little more. And have you, if you found it helpful that it can all be connected in the system? Absolutely. It paints a much bigger, broader, and more coherent picture. Um, sometimes it does seem a little bit more theoretical, but I think you need mm -hmm. that. And, sure. and that's one of the sure. big benefits of the platform is you can view it in that high level strategic view, but when you need to, you can dive down into the details and the specific examples. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I actually really liked your approach. I, I remember when, you know, when we, we, we sort of started looking at this together and uh, uh, that, that, you know, we, we, we think about it, it's C1 risk from that sort of assets to risk to controls to issues. But given that you are a mature program already, it, it did actually make a lot of sense for you to look at your findings and then go back and, and make sure your risk register was uh, uh, was aligned effectively and that you were tracking the right risks, right? And then to, and then to take a look at your control. So I thought actually that was a really interesting way that you did it in our platform. And, and, and I think, yeah, yeah, that, there's definitely some benefits to that. So that's, that's something that we're, we're gonna add into our training down the road. Definitely, you, you, you gave us a lesson learned there for sure, so. Cool. So, I'm glad I thought I was doing it the wrong way at first. So glad I was able to help. <laughs> there is no wrong way. There's only the secure way. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. So anyway, so uh, I mean, I know you've worked with a with a couple of other tools uh, in the vendor management space as well. Is there anything that's, uh, I, and I know you're just beginning your journey in vendor management with C1 Risk. Is there anything that stood out for you in the vendor management space that's been helpful or anything you that you're thinking about in terms of your own milestones for, for the future for, for vendor risk management? I think the real value of it and the biggest point of growth we've had with moving over to the platform is just that holistic risk register that we're now including our vendor risk in. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, niche tools are great for what they're there for, but you know, vendor risk is your risk. So yeah. managing it all in one place like that, it just, it makes sense it seems obvious to me why we would do that. Um, it's easier to manage. It's more efficient. We can have our controls that might apply to other practices that we can then apply mm -hmm. to our third party management. So um, being able to do that and just have it all in one interconnected place has been very valuable. As far as milestones goes, I'd say we just hit the biggest one, which is getting all of our vendors that were being tracked and managed um, into the system. So now we're really using the system as our primary vendor management tool. So that's been exciting for me rather mm -hmm. than living in two different worlds, now living in one. Um, the next milestone would be doing more with tracking our vendors. So we are doing document collection assessments on our vendors, but getting to the point where we actually have them set up for that ongoing monitoring is what I'm looking forward to the most next. All right, that's great, that's great. We'll I have two quick final questions. Any other advice you'd share for uh, other law firms out there? Um, you know, for law firms, I guess in this space, I would say to make sure that you are not falling behind in this field. I know as far mm -hmm. as security goes, law firms do seem to not be as up to speed as they should be given the sensitivity and the amount of data oh. that they're handling. So I would say don't fall behind because, you know, one, it's just a good practice. It's what your clients expect, but it's going to make you less competitive when they see that other law firms are outpacing you as far as securing their data goes. All right. And then last question, which is really the most important one. And of course it's related. I know you're in, I think you're in Cleveland right now, right? But uh, yeah. you're, uh, you're, you're, you're between Cleveland and Cincinnati. And I did have the pleasure of having a Coney dog when I was in Cincinnati last with you. So where do we get the best Coney dog in Cincinnati? And remember your, your boss is going to be watching this. Right. Um, <laughs> I don't think I'm qualified to say which is the best, but I'll say that if you're visiting Cincinnati, just for the cultural experience, you should try Skyline Chili. It's got to be done. <laughs> yeah, I take no blame if you end up hating it. It sounds like everybody either loves it or hates it. I have the misfortune of hating it, but craving it. So don't fall into that space. <laughs>
I think I'm right in that space with you. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. I was, yeah. Uh, I, was yeah, I, I was, I was surprised that, that I did actually enjoy it enough to to uh, not like it, but definitely know that I'll get one next time I come back and visit you for sure. So. Right. Yeah, you're uh, you're miserable while you're eating it, and then the next day you wake up and think I kind of want that again. <laughs> all right, right. So, all right. Well, thank you, Ryan, so much. Really appreciate you joining us today. And uh, this has been another episode of C1 of Cyber Elevated with C1 Risk. Thanks for joining us. Any questions in the comments below and uh, come and see us at c1risk.com. Thank you. Thanks, Ryan. Cool. Have a good one. Thanks for having me. This has been five minutes of cybersecurity elevated brought to you by C1 Risk. C1 Risk is a SaaS full suite automated GRC platform for all your integrated governance risk and compliance needs. Continuous security begins with C1 Risk. Remember to put your topics and questions in the comments below. Subscribe and follow and come visit us at c1risk.com. Have a good day.